No, today is Vision Sunday. We're going to be sharing our vision for the next year and what God has for us. And our church has a great legacy. And we're going to show you a video in just a few minutes about the legacy of what God has done in the past. He's done great things in the past, but I'm not intimidated, intimidated by what my father accomplished or what this church accomplished in the past because I believe that I stand on the shoulders of greatness. And so they laid the foundation, prepared it for us, and so God still has a plan for this church to carry on, continue on, and I believe that the latter is going to be greater than the former. Praise God. And so it's great to have the Wild Ones Children's Ministry here with us this morning with Pastor Gabby, Pastor Christy here. They do a great job in teaching our children. And uh, while you guys are here, I just want to let you know that God has a great plan for your life. And this is a time for you to get close to Him, to know God as a friend. Because later in life, you'll face uh, more difficult issues and uh, you'll be busier in your schedule and a lot of things will come up. But now you have time to really get to know God, to hear His voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear His voice. And so God wants to speak to you and lead you and guide you. I want you to know that your princes and princesses, your children of the King, that God loves you. You're part of His family. And God has called you. He has great things for you. Amen? Yeah. And then I'd just like to, uh, to uh, speak to the parents for a minute today. But if you have children here today, you need to make sure that they come to Wild Ones on Sundays and Wednesdays. And so they can be trained in the things of God. Because this is the time when they get established in the things of God. God moved in my life and I believe when I was just a boy. And was saved, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, God had a great touch upon my life. And I was called to preach when I was just a boy, and I got away from that later on. But, uh, but God spoke to me. So if you'll get your children here, God can touch them and train them. And, and so you don't let your kids decide whether they want to go to church or not. No more than you let them decide whether they want to go to school or not. Uh, it's not up to them, but God's put you in a position to lead them, guide them, train them. So set the example and bring them on Sundays and bring them on Wednesdays. I know that God will have a great impact in their life. And so uh, we'll let the wild ones be dismissed. And uh, if you'll follow Pastor Gabby out and go to their service over at the Firehouse Music Church. Great to uh, have a good day. Our church has a great legacy, and we have so much history, and we don't talk about it very often, uh, but we need to look back and see what God has done. The Bible talks about the power of testimony and remembering the great things that God has done in the past, and, and so uh, Kristen and Candy and Davis worked many hours this week putting together a video for us to watch which tells the history of the church, how we got where we are now, then a lot of uh, pictures and information. So we'll go ahead and show that at this time. That to know where you are going, you need to know where you came from. Every church has a story, a legacy passed down from generation to generation. Stories of how the church began, the people who gave the church a story, the leaders who led the narrative, and the members who forged ahead through prayer and giving and plain hard work to fulfill the vision given by God for that community. The history of your legacy here at the Gulf Coast Christian Center actually began with Robert Quentin Hankins and his wife, Rachel Muirhead Hankins, who were Pastor B.B. Hankins' parents. Robert, an accountant in Dallas, had been saved and delivered from alcoholism. Feeling the call of God on his life, Robert resigned his job and moved with his wife and three children to the Fairfield, Texas area to minister to those in the bootlegging industry. Through the Hankins ministry, nine of the converted bootleggers entered full-time ministry. Feeling the call of God on his own life, Robert's son, Billy Bob, was sent to Southwestern Bible Institute now known as Southwestern University in Waxahachie, Texas, to study for ministry. 
It was at Southwestern that he met a young woman named Velma Ray Dawes. They became engaged on the night of Billy Bob's college graduation and were married on July 25, 1947 at Fairfield, Texas, and soon entered the evangelistic field. In March 1948, the couple were pastoring in Grapeland, Texas, where their first son, Michael, was born. And four years later, their second son, Mark, was born. Consequently, in the year 1948, in the town of West Columbia, Texas, a Reverend and Mrs. J.A. Wilburn conducted a tent revival on Highway 36 in West Columbia, Texas. Seeing the need for a spirit-filled church in the town of the Wilborns, with 15 new congregants, rented the local movie theater on Brazos Avenue. In 1950, a lot was purchased on Bernard Street, and the congregation constructed a wooden frame building. The Assembly of God Church in West Columbia was only five years old when Billy Bob and Velma Hankins were invited to preach for the pastorate. At this time, Velma had become ill, suffering a nervous breakdown. The members of the church had compassion for the couple and their two young sons and asked them to be their pastors. Church member Elizabeth Burns later told Candy Hankins, We felt so sorry for BB with those two small children and a sick wife. We wanted to help them. Velma was healed when a strong minister of faith, F.E. Ward, driving through town one day, felt led by the Holy Spirit to stop and pray for the Assembly of God pastors. From that day on, Velma began to recover. Membership at that time was around 35 people. In 1957, the Hankins' daughter, Faith Marie, was born, and on October 10, 1958, their youngest son, Robert Manuel Hankins, was born. Slowly and steadily, the church began to grow. The strategy was simple. Every day, the couple would meet at the church with a few of the available people to pray. After prayer, people would break into teams and go around town praying for those in need. One particular day, a woman was given the name of E. Smith to visit. He owned a local grocery store. The woman said, oh, I can't go visit him. When asked why, she replied, he's the meanest man in town. B.B. told her, well, just go in and buy a loaf of bread and tell him that you are praying for him. Over time, B.B. would make an effort to visit E. Smith, buying groceries and just visiting with him. One day, a few of the daily beer drinkers were heckling B.B. about joining them for a drink when E. Smith spoke up and said, leave this man of God alone or I'm going to come out from around this corner and smack you in the head. He is the only one in this town that cares enough about me to check on me. Days later, E. Smith walked into the church and gave his life to Christ. Later, he told Pastor B.B. that he would have rather been in a cage with a lion than see that pastor come into his store. E. Smith was in his 60s when he got saved and won more people to Christ and brought them into the church than had been won in the years the Hankins had been there. One major conversion was E. Smith's son, Sidney, who was considered the second meanest man in town. Both men's radical conversions impacted the community of West Columbia. By 1968, the congregation had outgrown the Little White Church, and together the members raised funds to build a new brick building on the corner of 12th and Bernard. At that time, the name was changed to the Christian Center. A few years later, the old bowling alley in town at the corner of 725 West Brazos was put up for sale, and the need for more space prompted the congregation to purchase this property for a new sanctuary. The church grew to several hundred people in the 1970s, and a two-story classroom wing and offices were built onto the auditorium building in 1984. The church continued to grow in the 1980s, and a gymnasium and dining room were built in 1992. Later, more land became available along Highway 36, including the Miller Brewing Distribution Center across the street, which now houses our Spanish ministry. The former building at 12th and Bernard was turned into a senior citizen center and to this day serves the, the senior community through crafts, healthy meals, and Bible studies conducted by our own Carolyn Chafin and Bill Toller. The church continued to grow under B.B. and Velma's leadership and greatly impacted our community until his death in 2003 and hers in 2008. Through the years, F.E. Ward, the man who had prayed for Velma's healing, would be invited to preach. Often while preaching, the Lord would give him a prophetic word for the Hankins children. When their youngest son, Robert, also known as Bobby, was around 10 years of age, Brother Ward gave him a prophecy that he would be a minister. 
That very moment, Bobby preached his first sermon. Throughout his childhood, Bobby was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Late one night during his teen years, he heard the devil whisper, you don't have to serve God right now. Go ahead and have some fun. You can always serve him later. Bobby made the decision that night to stop listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He began partying and became addicted to drugs and alcohol, much like his grandfather. The one thing that always interested Bobby, though, was when the Holy Spirit would begin to move in service. And while he would not yield to the message, he appreciated seeing God move in the hearts of others. While in high school, Bobby began dating Candy Hankins from Sweeney, Texas. Candy's parents had raised her in an Assembly of God church, but a visit to the Christian Center changed her life. She was quoted as saying, I had never seen happy teenagers before. The, the youth group was large and the teenagers were happy and laughing and worshipped with all of their hearts and danced before the Lord. She and her family became members of the church in 1975 and each of them was highly impacted through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The youth group had a band called the Traveling Light and both Bobby and Candy were members of the band which traveled for two weeks in the summer. Bobby and Candy married in May of 1980 and moved to Fort Worth, Texas where Bobby finished his last year of college at Texas Wesleyan University, obtaining a degree in business and marketing. It was on a weekend visit back home to West Columbia when Bobby had an encounter with the Lord. It was a normal Sunday in September 1985. BB had invited full gospel businessman George Martin to preach that Sunday. George was a lawyer from Galveston and had grown up in West Columbia. However, the night before, George became ill and could not make it to preach. So he asked F.E. Ward to come down and speak in his place. The same F.E. Ward that had prayed for Velma about 20 years prior, and the same F.E. Ward who had prophesied over Bobby around the age of 10. As soon as F.E. took the podium, he called Bobby and Candy up to the platform. At that time, the minister sat on benches on the platform, and F.E. asked the associate pastors to step down to the front pew and asked Bobby and Candy to sit in their place. The presence of God was so strong that the two of them were physically shaking. F.E. said, Bobby, when you were young, I prophesied over you that you would be a minister of the gospel, and I must tell you that I had to apologize to God because I felt like I had missed it, that perhaps I had not heard him correctly. And I would say, God, I must have made a mistake, and I'm sorry about that. But this morning, the Lord is telling me that, no, I didn't miss it, but that it just wasn't the right time. Today he is telling me that now is the right time and that the same calling that you were given as a child is the same calling that is on you today. This is your day. This is your calling. And the time is now. If there had been any doubt, it was no longer there. Bobby's simple response to Effie Ward's words were, so be it. On May 4th, 1988, two weeks before his graduation from Southwestern, Candy gave birth to Christian Lee Hankins and Bob carried her in his arms as he walked out of his graduation. <laughs> Bob and Candy moved to Alexandria, Louisiana to work with Mark and Trina Hankins. While they were in Alexandria, their second daughter, Annie Lane, was born. A year later, they were invited to be pastors at the Assembly of God Church in Beeville, Texas, where they served for six years. God placed them with a tremendous group of people hungry for the move of God. And in the summer of 1998, B.B. Hankins asked his son if he would be willing to move to West Columbia and become his associate pastor. Although the Hankins were happy in Beeville, the opportunity to work with his father and be near both their parents caused the couple to say yes. They knew it was a calling from God. It was only four years later that B.B., having pastored the Gulf Coast Christian Center for 49 years, was called to heaven. And five years later, Velma joined him. The Hankins counted a blessing to be senior pastors of the Gulf Coast Christian Center. God has given them a fantastic staff, including their daughter Christian. The Hankins are overwhelmed by the faithfulness and longevity of their congregation, as well as new people God is continually bringing in. They would not want to be anywhere else in the world and are thankful for the church family God has joined them with in reaching their community and beyond for the gospel of Christ.
you to know where we came from. And we're still following the vision that my father had. He had a world vision that goes way beyond the city limits of West Columbia, the four walls of this church. But people from, uh, from this church have gone all over the world to establish churches and preach the gospel. Uh, I counted in 2015, I counted 46 people that were in vocational ministry who were either raised in this church or they were children of people who were raised in this church. So our church has always been a sending church and we've always had a world vision and we still do. Last year we gave $99,000 and, and a few dollars more than that to missions, almost $100,000. Give yourself a hand to do that. And so we send people out, we send teams out all over the world. Our church has a church in Thailand, pastored by Mac, uh, Mike and Dow Holmes. And of course our church built that church in 2005. And, and Dow's over there right now. She's coming back, I believe, next week. And uh, we'll get to see her. So I know Mike's excited about that. But we have an overseas church in a nation that's only 1% Christian. And, uh, and so praise God that we have a world vision and we support 22 ministries every month. I don't know if I said that, but uh, we do that as people give missions offerings and, and mission, make mission pledges. And if you're not doing that, I would encourage you to do that because we have an impact on thousands of people that you never see, unless we show the video on Mission Sunday, you never see the impact that we have. But we have an impact all over the world. Praise God. And so, uh, but not only do we have an impact on the world, but we have an impact in our community. And so we've always been an outreach church. We still have four major outreaches a year, which are the Palm Sunday egg hunt that we just had, but if you were here, you saw that the church was full, and we ministered to the children and parents of our community. And then Columbia United is an outreach of our youth to the, to the uh, senior citizens and needy of West Columbia by repairing uh, their, their homes. And so that happens in June of every year. In July, we have Vacation Bible School, and we have a couple hundred children come in, who minister to, and taught the Word of God every day. And in December, we have our Christmas dinner and outreach, which is to the needy of our community. And so uh, She Sisterhood, Christians started She Sisterhood a couple of years ago. It's a ladies women's ministry of our church and of course they meet uh, quarterly but also they have an outreach to the schools of Columbia, Missouri, ISD and so they have a program called uh, Shine, got up here, they have a program called Shine which teaches girls self-worth and self-esteem and so they're in the schools and teaching that and their vision is that every girl and woman in Missouri County know her worth in God's eyes. Amen. And so uh, it's an awesome opportunity to be in the schools and be able to share the love of God and the value and worth of each lady. Praise God. Our church has always been a church where all people are welcome. And so whether you're poor, whether you're a multimillionaire, you're welcome here. People of all races are welcome here. Uh, our church was probably the first Anglo church that was racially integrated in the 1960s. And, uh, and so we were a leader in that area because of my father and his vision. And, uh, and so it's still that way, amen? We're, we're, uh, everybody's equal in Christ. Every race, uh, every sex is equal in Christ. We're all, we all have the same value and worth in God. So everybody is welcome here, amen? Yeah. You don't have to be a particular race or economic status. And you know, you might, in this church, you might see somebody who's poor sitting next to a millionaire. And uh, so we, you know, we're not a social club, but we preach the gospel to all people and all races. Our vision is to experience God, find community, fulfill our purpose. And so as we get together, our primary goal is to experience God. And so God tells us how he wants to be loved or how he wants to be worshipped. And he tells us that in the Word. And so when we get together, we don't just want to have a program, but we want to feel the presence of God yeah. and feel the anointing here. And we can do that whenever we get together. Yeah. Jesus said if two or three get together, I'm right there in the midst of him. But we have to take time 
acknowledge God and worship Him for His presence to be made manifest. And so God is everywhere. He's omnipresent, but His presence is not always manifest everywhere. But whenever we get together and really worship Him in spirit and truth, then we can feel His presence. Yes. And when we feel His presence, or what some folks call the anointing, then just anything can happen. I know as a preacher, preaching the Word of God, whenever we have an outstanding worship service and, and the presence of God is manifest, it makes preaching the Word much easier. Amen? And so uh, it just flows whenever the presence of God is here. And so we take time in worship to be able to feel His presence and be able to experience His presence. I'm thankful for Pastor Candy and our worship team and, and because they work so hard and they prepare to be able to lead us into the presence of God. And so our goal is that everybody participate in worship. Yeah. And you know, they don't come here to entertain us, but they come to lead us in worship, lead us in the presence of God. And so don't let anybody do your worshiping for you. Come on, you're here to worship God. Amen. A book uh, in the past called The Five Love Languages, and it talks about the ways that people like to be loved. And there's basically five ways to love somebody, or five general ways that people like to be loved. And, and one is touch, uh, another is compliments, another is spending time together, another is service, and the other is uh, receiving gifts or giving gifts. But the five basic ways that people like to be loved. And I thought about this and I thought, well, it applies to God too because he showed us how he likes to be loved. He likes to be loved by us spending time with him. Amen. And when you do that on your own, it's called prayer. And God wants to spend time with you. But whenever we get together and worship God, it's called corporate worship. And so God has ordained that we get together and worship Him because He wants to meet with us. And in the Old Testament, they met God in the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was a meeting place of God and man. And whenever we get together, we still meet with God. He, he loves us and we give our love to Him. Amen? Amen? God also likes compliments. He tells us in the Word that He likes compliments. And so... We give, we enter his courts, uh, we enter his gates with thanksgiving, which is thanking him for the things that he has done for us in the past. We enter his courts with praise, which is complimenting him, acknowledging yeah. his great work and who he is. Yes. And so we, we give him praise. And the Bible says, your praise is the fruit of, fruit of your lips. And, and so it's you know, not, a, not something silent, but it's something that you speak out or something that you sing. Amen. And then the Bible says, praise him, you know, with musical instruments. Praise him, clap your hands, raise your hands, uh, dance. There's so many different ways that we can praise God. And so my goal is, or my vision, is that our worship services increase in intensity. More people enter in and worship. Amen. And whenever we do that, then the glory of God will fill this house. And that's how I want to be different from most of the churches in Missouri County. It's for the glory of God, the presence of God to be here. Amen. We don't just want to have a program and an order of service that we follow strictly, but the Holy Spirit can interrupt our order of service yeah. anytime that He wants to. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I want to experience God. Yeah. I want to touch God. God's not a feeling, but you can feel God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so uh, my vision is that we have freedom of, of praise and worship and the glory of God to fill this house. Yeah. And one of the ways that happens is whenever we pray before service, or we pray on Saturday. You know, you know, you don't come to church having not contacted God all week. And I mean, you're totally spiritually dead and your battery's down. But come fired up and come in, bring something. I know many, many times people come to church to receive something, but we should bring something too. Amen. Bring the anointing, the glory, and the presence of God with us. Praise God. My vision is that our church find community. Community is friendships and relationships. And so God has ordained fellowship. And, and just like God puts people in a physical family, He also puts us in a spiritual family. And so it's not an accident that you're here, but if God's called you, 
is so that you have relationship with the people in this church. And you know, you can go to a church and, and go for years and never really develop any friendships or relationships. If you just come to the service and leave quickly after, if you never get involved in the ministry or never go on Wednesday nights or other times, you won't really get to know anybody very well. But one of the reasons that we get together is to have Christian friends and community and be able to fellowship together. And God has called us to do that. And you know, most of the things that I've learned spiritually, I've learned by relationships with other Christians. Yeah. And people who were more mature and further along than me, and they taught me. I didn't just read it out of a book or watch church on TV and learn it that way, but I learned it in real life relationships yeah. with real life people. Yeah. And so we have opportunities in this church for you to develop friendships and relationships. And of course, you can't do that in a, in a worship service, but you can do it after church. Uh, you can do it on Wednesday nights. We have a casual setting uh, in smaller groups. I teach the adult class on Wednesday night. We have a meal together. And I teach out of different Bible subjects. I'm teaching on how to minister to the sick right now. And we'll be studying that uh, for a few weeks, and then we'll move on to something else. But it's a, a setting where you sit down, we eat together, Talk, uh, talk together and get to know each other. The young adults meet so on Wednesday nights right behind the platform here. And uh, I'd like to thank Josh and Jamie Edwards for leading that. And, and they've done a great job. And, and, uh, and so we've seen growth in young adults who are ministering to that age group in our community. Yeah. And God's doing great things through young adults. And, and of course, She Sisterhood meets quarterly, a place where, where the women get together and get to know each other. And then there's Coffee by Candy on two, every third Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Heard great things about that. And uh, it's just a time of fellowship for our ladies. And I think they're meeting this Tuesday at 10 a.m. And just fellowship, talk about the things of God today. Amen. Ephesians 4.16 says, speaking, uh, speaking of the church says, that the body is fitly joined together by that which every joint supplies. The NLV translation says, as each part does its own work, it helps the other parts grow. Yeah. And so we help each other grow spiritually because you have a gift that I don't have and I have a gift that you don't have and we use our gifts to benefit one another. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And the Bible says iron sharpens iron. As iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. Yeah. Amen? So you can teach me things that I don't know. I can teach you things that you don't know. But the Bible says that we are a body that has many different parts and we work together for the good of the body and for the benefit of the body. Amen. Amen. And so I can't fulfill the will of God for my life on my own. And you can't either. Yeah. But together we can fulfill the will of God for our lives and for this church. Praise God. Um, and then also... Part of the purpose of our church is to fulfill our purpose. Everybody has a purpose in life. Amen. And God has a purpose for you. You're not just here by accident, but God has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. And, and so you find that purpose in relationship with other people. You know, a baseball player doesn't find what his position is just sitting at home. But he's got to get on the team and find out what he's good at and what his gift is. And when you find out what your spiritual gift is and, and the gifts that God has given you, then you know your purpose in life because God gives you a gift that complements his purpose for you. Yes. And so he has a purpose for all of us, but as we get together, we begin to discover that purpose. Yeah. And as you begin to serve willingly in whatever area of need that there is, then you will find the purpose in life. And what God has for you. Amen? And so, uh, and so you can find that at this church. I said that there's 46 people in vocational ministry who came out, out of this church. But not everybody's called in vocational ministry. But when you're here, as, you, as you're part of the ministry, then God will speak to you. And you'll begin to, to discover his will for your life and his purpose for your life. I'm thankful for Firehouse Youth Ministries. And, you know, they've been here for 20 years. The Walkers have been here for 20 years. And they've raised up 
many young people who've come through who have found their purpose in life, purpose in life right here at our church. Amen. And found the place that God has for them. Praise God. So you don't have to wait till you're 50 to find your purpose in life. You can find it when you're a teenager. Amen? And not waste a lot of years. Some, some folks waste a lot of years, but you don't have to do that. You can find it when you're young and be on the right track, fulfill God's purpose for you. Praise God. And, uh, and then I have a scripture and a word I believe that God has for our body this year in the next year and then also in future years is Isaiah 43 18 it says remember not the former thing consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers of the desert and so God is doing a new thing in this church we've seen the great things that he's done in the past but he still has something new for us to accomplish amen and so we build on the past, but we know that he's doing a new thing. And so it's not going to be exactly like it was in the past. Come on, and then the, the message of, of the gospel is always the same, but sometimes the methods change. Amen? Because we have to reach the culture of the people who are around us. And, and so God's doing new things in this church. First of all, he's given us new hearts. Ezekiel 36, 26. It says that God will give, a, give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. He'll take out the heart of soul and put in a heart of flesh. And so God is working on our hearts. He's working on our attitudes. Amen? Yes. And causing us to be, to be receptive to him and his presence and his will. And so God is working, changing our hearts, causing us to be people who walk in love and people who are forgiving of each other. Amen? Yes. And so as our hearts change, then God is able to do more in us, come on, use us more, and bless us more as our hearts become receptive to what He wants to do. Praise God. And so uh, when it says God's doing a new thing in the scripture in Isaiah 43, it says uh, it's talking about new roads and new rivers. It's talking about new opportunities. And I believe that new opportunities are coming to our church in 2018 and in the future years. Amen. And so God is doing a quick work because we live in the very last of the last days. If you've been reading the news, you see that Russia has soldiers in Syria. The United States has soldiers in Syria. There's a conflict going on over there. And so we could be on the very verge of the end time right now. But it also, when it's end time, then it's also harvest time. Because the harvest has to come in before Jesus comes again. Amen? And so there will be an acceleration in the things of God, an acceleration of what God is doing in these last days. And it's going to happen in this church, and it's going to happen all over the world. Amen? That God's speeding things up. He's accelerating things. And things that used to take a long time aren't going to take that long anymore. Amen. And people can, can look back and say, well, you know, it took 10 years to do this or 15 years to do that. But there's an acceleration that's coming so that we can reach the end time harvest and reach our community and reach the world. Amen. Yeah. And so Amos 9, 13 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And so God's word translation says, the ones, the ones who plow will catch up to the ones who harvest. Can you believe that? We know that planting and harvesting are normally several months apart, but it says there's coming a time when the planters will catch up with the harvesters. Amen. In other words, harvest is going there'll be so much harvest coming in that it won't be life as normal in life as usual, which means that we have to prepare for what God is going to do in this house and prepare for the harvest that's coming in. The New Living Translation says the time will come when the grain and grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. More harvest they can be gathered. And let me prophesy that over this church, that this church will receive a bigger harvest than it's able to contain. In other words, 
the buildings can't contain all the people. Come on. There's an abundance of finances, an abundance of everything that's needed, that's caused by God. This is something supernatural that God is doing to bring in the end time harvest. Can you believe that for this house? Come on, can you believe in acceleration? Come on, that, that things are happening faster. They're happening greater. The Bible says that God can do more than we can even expect or fathom with our mind. And so God's going to do bigger things and greater things in this house than we can even fathom. We've been, we've been used to things moving kind of at a slow pace. And things are kind of happening kind of slow. But they're going to start happening a lot quicker. Amen? That is what I'm believing God for for this house. That's what I'm believing God for in your life. Praise God. And so God is bringing that acceleration. He's bringing that harvest. And so we're getting ready for it. And beginning in May, on May the 7th, we're going to begin the tear out of the foyer to be able to remodel that. And that's part of the Renew the House campaign. And so we've waited on that for almost two years. But we're going to begin that. We're going to put in a kitchen, coffee bar. Back there, we're going to redo the restrooms. We're going to have a little children's play area over here. And so we're getting ready for the harvest for people to come in so that people can come in and find community. We'll be able to fellowship together. Amen. To modernize this house for the harvest that's coming in. And I'd like to thank everybody who's given to renew the house for the, for the next couple of years. And we have our banquet in the 10th and, and give details of all of that, but that's happening right now, amen? Yes. And so yes. things are happening quicker than expected. God's yes. doing a new thing, he's doing a greater thing. And in your life, things that you have been waiting for will, uh, will happen this year, amen? Yes. Things that you've been believing God for for years and you've been waiting for, you know, and I've talked about seasons of, of when, <laughs> when prayers get answered and all those things. But God is doing acceleration, and so you can believe Him and expect Him that it's going to happen faster. Amen. How do you believe that with me for the acceleration in this house? Amen. And this year, the waiting time is over, but it's happening this year. So we just have to get ready for it. Let's stand up and again agree. Come on, I want you to agree with me. Praise God for it that it's happening in this house. And Father, we thank you for an acceleration of your promises. We thank you, Father, for every word that's been spoken over this house. But, but we praise you, Father, that the harvest is coming in and we call it in so that this house can be filled for your glory, Father. And we thank you that we don't have to wait and say what's going to happen one of these days, but it's happening quickly. And we declare that and we prophesy that not only for this church, but for individuals who've been waiting. Praise God. And so I'm just going to pray a prayer for individuals. You've been waiting for an answer to prayer and for God to bring it about. And I'm just going to release it right now. Father, we thank you for an acceleration. We thank you for answers to these prayers, the things that they've waited on. They've been patient. They've been faithful, Father. And we call in the harvest, call in the answers this morning. We thank you that you're bringing it about because you're doing a quick work, Father. And we praise you for that and magnify your name that in the future the harvest will come in, but the fields are ripe for harvest. And so we're bringing, God's bringing the harvest in. He's got divine connections for each and every one of us. And so things are accelerating in the spirit realm and you'll see it manifest in the physical realm. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's work in their work today.